Hello, today I'm going to teach you how to play against and get an advantage when your opponent plays the Danish Gambit. So the Danish Gambit goes like this. They start with e4, we go e5, they will play d4, we will take, they will play c3, we will take the pawn, then they will develop their bishop to c4, we take the pawn, and they take the bishop. So what happens here is that we were two pawns up in exchange for white having a very good development and two very nice bishops. So, what our main objective in this position is, is to get out of the center and develop our pieces as soon as possible. Because if we don't, white will have a very powerful attack incoming. So the first move we should play, which is Stockfish's favorite, is this bishop b4 check. Because this move forces our opponent to do a response. At the same time, we develop our APs and prepare to castle on the king side when it's possible. In this position, white is most likely to block with their knights either here or here, because blocking with a bishop would be a very bad move because we just get rid of one of white's main attacking pieces, and we're very okay in this position. And moving the king is just bad, because, you know, it's not a good move. It's actually a decent move account to the computer, but it's generally not seen as good for a human. So their most, the main move in the Danish Gambit is knight c3. Our next move is to, should be to develop our knight. We could go either here or here. But the best move, according to the computer, is knight f6. A very common move that our opponent will do, which looks kind of scary, especially a move opponents will do in the lower levels, is the move e5. Which on computer level is a mistake, but for mere 1200s, etc., it's a fairly scary looking move. The reason is because if we move our knight here or here, gets taken by the queen and if we move it here it gets taken by the bishop so it looks like we either have to go uh, over here or back which is pretty which looks pretty scary this might look like a good move in first sight but the reason this isn't a good move is because white has a very nice tactic which is bishop takes f7 which is devastating if we take the bishop they would have this very nice move queen f3 check and we're going to lose the knight. We can move the knight back, but they can simply take. They don't even have to take. They can play other moves because we're still in a pin and we're going to lose the knight eventually. So that move doesn't quite work. And if we go back, it's just very bad. We lose a lot of tempo and white is just going to destroy us. So the move here is actually d5. The point is, if they take our knight, we could take their bishop, However, this isn't the best move. The best move here is actually queen takes f6. The reason why this is a good move is because we're both attacking this knight twice, they're defending it once, and we're also attacking this bishop with a pawn. So let's say they take our pawn to save the bishop, then we can take the knight with check. If they take back, we take with the queen, and they're forced to move the king. Because if they try to block with the queen, we simply just win the rook. So let's say this doesn't happen. Let's say we play d5 and our opponent just plays something like bishop back. W then what should we do? We can simply just develop our knight over here because they don't have this check anymore. We're going to try and trade material. Let's say they develop their knight. Then we just... That's a very bad move. <laughs> let's say develop their knight here. Then we can actually simply either trade but even more easily, we could just simply castle, get very safe, and we are just good out of the opening, up to pawns, and we're completely fine. But here we actually have an even better tactic. Instead of castling, we can simply just push the pawn. And they're forced to either take with the knight or the queen, because if they don't, then they will lose this knight because of the pin and the pawn, which will take the knight on the next move. But what if our opponent doesn't play e5 here? What if they play the more accurate move, which is queen b3, which is the best move? Well, then this looks pretty scary because they're simultaneously attacking the f7 pawn and the bishop. But we have two uh, moves we can use here to be pretty safe. It's either just taking the knight with check, but then they'll just take back and they, they then they still have this very good pressure on our side and it looks quite scary. Another move we can have, which is more accurate, is the move queen e7, which simultaneously uh, defends the bishop, defends the pawn, and also attacks this pawn. 
So here our opponent is most likely to probably try and uh, develop the knight and try to get an attack going. But here we simply will just castle. And here we're very happy. If they try some shenanigans like this again, they can't even take the knight because they're pinned. And here, of, let's say if they castle, we're simply just going to start developing. We're probably going to take and then maybe play this move d6, get our bishop out, start getting our knights out, and we are completely okay, simply two pawns up. And this is how we refute the Danish gambit.